Uh, today we're going to talk about just a class of market steers and just we'll go through kind of the basics of what to look for when you're walking up to a class of market steers. The first thing you need to do is uh, how a class of market steers is put together is you are to assume that this steer is ready to go to the rail. So uh, market readiness plays a pretty good factor into it. So you need to look at like level of condition of the steer, muscling, all that stuff because the goal is to determine which steer is going to hang the most pounds of red meat. So you have to factor that in to uh, when you're looking at a class but you, uh, you also don't want to give up structure balance you know thing, things that y'all will have worked on in dairy cattle I'm sure you don't want to give that up that's also important but you know total muscle mass and base width is a, another big part of it uh, this class right here is just a pretty average set of market steers uh, it's place 4132 and we'll go through some quick so, some aspects of each steer real quick. If you want to look at it just from the profile standpoint right here, um, four is an obvious winner. Okay, uh, definitely the most market ready steer in terms of fat cover. The best place to kind of look for fat cover uh, is through the brisket area behind the rib uh, in the flank next to the cod, and then uh, in beef cattle when they start getting too fat. They'll put a lot of pone fat up around their tail head. So if you see pone fat around that tail head, that's the last place they're actually going to put fat. So if they've got some there, they're uh, they're a little over conditioned. Um, but like I said, four definitely from the profile view. Uh, he's got good bone, good feet and legs. You know, there's not really any issues with this steer, but he's not just like a rock star. He's just kind of is what he is, pretty average, but he doesn't have any big holes in him. Um, you go to three, three's got a nice front end. He's a little coarse shouldered, a little too open, but he's got a nice, like long extended front end. And for being a Charlotte cross, like he is, he's pretty clean fronted. Um, but then he really kind of falls apart. He's really tight ribbed. Like if you'll see right here behind his front leg, uh, he's very tight. You want a lot of depth right there in what they call like the, the heart, the heart girth area. You want a good bit of depth and width, and this steer just looks like you stuck pulled a rubber band around him right behind his shoulder blades. Uh, from there, he stays pretty tubular, and he's really high flanked. That is not a good thing in a market steer. It's a really good indicator of like a hard feeder, and one that's going to take a lot of time in the yards, and you're losing a lot of product when you don't get that extra depth of uh, gut. Um, back legs are all right. He's probably a little straight and he's pretty narrow. As you can tell, he's kind of will stand on top of himself here. He's got a lot of muscle through his rear end. Um, and it's good shape. He would, you need, you want a, a market steer to carry that muscle down into what they call their lower quarter. So as you get through that stifle area and down towards their hock, you want to see them carry that rump muscle shape you want to have it longer like you see here in steer four he kind of he kind of a little smoother and brings it down a little further than oops, than this one in steer and then uh in steer three he's got muscle shape but he just doesn't carry it all the way through kind of the same thing in two um he's just kind of a bigger framier steer and he's i don't know he's a mess um he's not very wide he's got a nice front end you cut this off he looks pretty good the rest of it um kind of coarse shouldered he's very unbalanced uh i mean I, i'm assuming y'all talk about balance in dairy cattle you know he's kind of going uphill from his chest floor into his cod area and that lower flank uh that is not good you definitely do not want that and then his uh he carries really no muscle down into that lower quarter um, he's got bad hip in him, like his, you can tell his hooks to his pins are not, you want that as level as you can, and uh, he's definitely not, and from the way he stands, he probably looks like he pinches a little bit at his pins. Um, so, steer one, he's kind of the uh, mystery one of the bunch, he's got probably the, be he's got the best front end of the bottom three by far, he carries... Uh, you can tell he's a little wider in his chest floor just from the way he's standing. He's not as coarse as shouldered. He's a little clean fronted, more clean fronted because he's an Angus. 
Um, he can, from what it looks like from the profile, he's got a nice top line on him. The back legs are kind of skeptical because this is a bad angle. Um, so we'll see that more so in these later pictures. But overall, from like when you walk up to a class, try to put it in pairs just like you would in dairy judging. And this one is definite. As soon as you walk up, four wins the class, and then you've got to sort it out from there. All right. So steer one, when we look at him from here, from this profile, he's a little better. Um, he still kind of cuts up in his flank. We wouldn't, don't really want to see that. Uh, from the front view, he's got a good front end on him. The feet placement's really good. You, it's the same thing as in dairy cattle. You don't want him pigeon-toed. You don't want him splay-footed. You want a nice, smooth shoulder. Um, and he does that. This steer is really where he kind of earns his spot is from this back view. He's got a lot of base width at the ground, which is very important in a market class. Like you wanna see how those four feet hit the ground and base width without compromising structure is a big positive. And this bull's got a lot of it here. Um, and you know, and just good muscle shape in general, like, you know, he's, he's not a bad steer. Uh, steer number two, again, the front end's not bad. Uh, the back end, he's kinda narrow. And uh, you can see from these side view pictures, he's just, he's got no guts to him, hard feeder, and you don't like the way that muscle carries in that rear leg. Uh, steer number three is a little bit splay footed. It's because of that open shoulder he's got. Uh, and then again, like he's not showing a whole lot of muscle through his rear from the back view, and he's not as wide as you'd like to see him at the ground. Um, and then as we go to steer four, we talked about our class winner. Good profile, good front end, good base width at the back, and overall very well balanced from his chest floor all the way to his rear flank. I mean, just a pretty pretty solid steer overall. He's not going to go out and win anything, but within this class of uh, steers that we have here, he's your definite winner. Um, from a structural standpoint, he's probably the best. Uh, there's a really nice shoulder in steer one. Steer two, I don't like his hip or his rear legs. Same thing in steer three. Um, so that's, you really have a first, and as you get to the butt view on the steer number one, he kind of falls into your easy second. And then it's just from then on, you know, trying to find the best of the worst. So uh, if you go to this website, you can see what they actually have placed, it, like what, what kind of what they talk the reasons themselves. Um, but really, on the bottom end, they do a two-point cut. In livestock judging, a two-point cut kind of can go either way. Uh, they like three over two. I just don't like two in general. He's you can he looked like he hadn't eaten here lately. Um, he's really empty up in his upper flank. I think number three's got just a little bit more muscle to him than steer number two does, and so that's what kind of what they're going for. But really, they're both awful. So uh, if you swap that bottom pair, I wouldn't worry about it too much. All right, uh, here we're gonna look at a second class of market steers. These are some steers uh, from the San Antonio Livestock Show in 2016. Um, so we got a lot of Simmental, uh, one kind of Lemmy looking steer and a Charlotte cross steer. Um, you know, from the initial profile, you got three steers that look pretty similar. And then you've got one that kind of falls to the back. Uh, this poor little Lumi steer, he, he just doesn't have enough power to hang with the rest of the steers in this class. I mean, he breaks behind his blades, and he's kind of weak-topped. And, uh, I mean, based on what we're seeing here, well, uh, everybody else has got a pretty solid top, you know, uh, plenty of cover. He's probably a little bit younger, a little less days on feed, but uh, he just kind of gets outpowered and out-muscled here in this class. Um, and then you kind of go, and I, I always like to look at bone and foot size, which is a really, it, it's important in market cattle. I mean, you want a lot of bone and a lot of foot because these cattle are going to finish out at, you know, 1,300 to 1,400 pounds. And so they've got to have the skeletal mass to carry all that red meat, uh, without breaking down. And so, you know, steer number three, steer number four are probably the two bigger bones. Uh, steers in the class. Steer number one, he's not light bone by any means. I think he's got adequate amount of bone, but uh, he's definitely not the biggest. 
Uh, another thing you want to look for in your market steer class is uh, you want to check out their hocks and make sure they're not too coarse jointed or they're not building any fluid on those joints. Uh, that's just caused to either, you know, usually too straight uh, and it causes strain on those joints and they'll actually build up fluid and that's a big uh, negative when you're actually out there judging them. So keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, right there at that hock joint, you'll see these little as it looks like air bubbles underneath the skin but it's a it's a fluid pocket essentially that's made from too much stress on those joints so that's one thing you've got to kind of watch for in market steer classes because that can definitely uh hurt an animal that's otherwise towards the top of the class um let's see if we can get to a different view okay now from the rear view as we can talk beforehand steer number two is definitely last um, just really no muscle shape through, uh, through his rear. Doesn't carry it very deep. This area right here where the cod is is kind of what they call the twist. And you want them to be wide through their twist and carry a lot of muscle shape. Uh, yeah, cod's another p good place to look uh, for fat deposition, especially on these steers. They'll, they'll uh, deposit a lot of fat there as they get overly conditioned. Um, steer number one is definitely showing us the most base width. Uh, in this class, I think he's got plenty of muscle to compete with the rest of this. If you had to pick the heaviest muscled from this view, uh, you would definitely have to go with steer number three here. These different, as you can tell, you know, you kind of see the contrast uh, in the picture here, and that's going to be the actual like definition of the muscle. So he's not overly conditioned. You can see a lot of that muscle definition. Um, but as far as base width goes, this steer number one, he's got a lot of base width. His joints look pretty smooth from here. He's real square at the ground from the front and the back. Uh, and definitely adequate muscle for his frame. Uh, like we talked about earlier, steer number three is a pretty big bone, good muscle. Same thing with steer number four. I think he's adequate. He's cow hocked a little bit, which is uh, he's a little narrow in his pin set, which is going to cause those feet to turn out like that. Uh, you know, you probably have a little of the same issue here with steer three. But I think his he's got that much more muscle and kind of makes up with it. I would say we call we say uh, like animals are square hips, so that's also the actual levelness of their hip and the width of their pin sets in comparison to their hooks. And I would say lot or uh, steer number one would by far be the squarest hip steer in the class, uh, probably followed by three and four pretty close, and then number two is just kind of dragging up the end. Uh, but definitely, as you go through this class, I would consider one as uh, kind of the front runner because he's got enough muscle. You know, he's not the heaviest muscle steer in the class, but I think his structure and his base width and the amount of muscle that he had makes him one of the more balanced and complete steers in the class. He's not, you know, the high end of any one trait besides probably base width, but he's definitely the most complete as of 14 seconds in. All right, now we're looking over the top again. Steer number two, just not hanging with the rest of the pack. And now we kind of look at steer number four over here. Uh, you know, you kind of want to look at fat thickness over the 12th and 13th rib, which is where they're going to cut for the ribeye. And uh, this modeling on his top line kind of messes with you from a profile view. But as you get over the top of him, he's probably one of the... Uh, smaller top steers you know a ribeye is a very important cut in a beef carcass and so the size of that ribeye makes a big difference in a market steer and they're going to measure that ribeye at the 12th and 13th rib about right here so as you're looking at these steers make sure you get up behind them and kind of get over the top of them and look uh, at the actual ribeye size you want like a nice butterfly kind of rounded shape of that top you don't want it too sharp you want a nice round edge to that top so show they have enough condition and a good size ribeye this one he kind of breaks straight down you can see uh you get over the top of him he doesn't have a whole lot of rib shape not a whole lot of ribeye shape this one would ha would have has less ribeye shape than you would expect um so you know you really could honestly consider putting him in a Pretty comfortable third and now you're looking at your top two steers uh, from a this angle both of them pretty comparable um, you know you can tell 
Maybe uh, steer number two is a little more conditioned. You can kind of see a little bit of fat deposition around that tail head, which is what we call pones, and really not so much here. So uh, on a beef animal, fat moves from the front of the animal to the back. So when they start putting fat back at those pones, he's uh, very well conditioned everywhere else. Now we've kind of got a view coming over the top of him. Uh, and as you can see here, really smooth on one and two over the top, nice rounded edges. Uh, you know, those are going to be your biggest topped steers of the class, these two right here. Again, two's not as bad from this profile, but he's just got so much other stuff working against him. And then you get here on steer number one. Got a powerful top, but he's a little flat uh, in his uh, fore rib, which is what you're going to call this rib right here behind, uh, behind his shoulder. Uh, I wouldn't say he breaks at his blades, which is where it, you're actually going to have very little muscle shape right behind the shoulder blades, but he's definitely really flat and is weak in his full ribs, so that's going to hurt him and it's going to give him more of an hourglass kind of shape coming out of his shoulder, dipping in around that full rib, and then coming back out at the 12th and 13th rib. You want it to be really solid as it comes out behind that shoulder and very smooth like you'll see here in three and one. Uh, three a little more so than one, but like we talked about, Three's probably a little fatter than one, and so he's going to deposit fat there uh, before it makes all the way back. So that's giving him that nice, smooth look. But uh, but yeah, so I, I would say from this top view, I would make sure to put steer number four as a pretty solid third and forget about him. Okay, so now we have a little bit better profile view. Uh, steer number four got a lot of muscle shape, but he just kind of is lacking in his whole front end. Steer number two, dead last. Now this is a this is a really nice profile to compare these two. Um, steer number three is probably a little bit shorter necked, but he's real clean through his front end, good in his chest. Uh, I'd like to see steer number three a little deeper chested. Uh, he squares off real nice here through his brisket. But as big a steer as he is, you would like to see that his chest cavity go a little bit deeper um, because, um, you know, the more chest width, the more chest cavity you got, the more he can carry that base width through the rest of his body. Um, and then as you start looking at him from the profile, you know, you kind of want to measure your chest floor to your flank, and he's got a lot of uphill. Um, steer number three goes uphill as well. But I think is he's a little less conditioned. But if you look, his chest floor all the way to his navel is uh, pretty much the same level. We've got a lot of uphill action going over here on steer number three. And as, as far as along as he is in his condition, he definitely should drop that flank a lot lower, and he hasn't. So to me, I put him a pretty confident second. And I would say steer number one wins the class. He's the most complete steer out there. Smooth shouldered, good bone, adequate bone, great muscle. Carries it really well for his frame. Uh, and he's got a lot of base width and just a lot of power. And it's a complete steer overall. Steer number three is probably the heaviest muscle steer in the class. But he's got some structural issues. And he's not near as balanced as you would like to see him. Uh, you probably, if you were able to actually watch him walk around, he would probably uh, short stride a little bit just because of the way his hip is set. But really, uh, you know, a pretty pretty challenging class, I would say, besides your obvious loser. Uh, but you've got to really got to look at these steers and kind of pick them apart. You can't just muscle them out um, just because, you know, there's a lot of other things that go into it. Uh, muscle is definitely an important factor in judging these classes, but you can't give up structure, soundness, or balance uh, when you're uh, when you're evaluating these steers. Always kind of start at the ground and work your way up. You want to see some good feet, good legs, good base width, and then if they've got good base width, especially in these higher end contests like y'all are going to, they should have adequate muscle for that base width. You know, you're gonna try to find those narrow made frailer made steers and those are going to go towards the bottom end of the class you should have some high quality stock that you're looking at so if you can kind of start at the ground and work your way up then you can weed out a couple steers kind of right off the bat
All right, now we're going to look at a class of Angus heifers. Um, heifers are a little bit different than market steers. Uh, we don't put as much emphasis on muscle as we do on structural correctness, femininity, and uh, breed type. So whoever put this class together used the same picture twice for... Uh, number one and number three. So we're just going to focus on two, three, and four. Um, you know, depend, depending on what breed of heifers you're going to be judging, you know, kind of keep that in mind. Certain breeds have certain kind of characteristics. Uh, like we were talking about earlier with the market steers. Market steers are going to be mostly crossbreds. Uh, so breed type doesn't matter whatsoever in the market classes. But if you're going to do a breeding set of females, they're all going to be the same breed. So you definitely kind of want to take whatever that breed's characteristics are into consideration. Um, basic things to kind of look for, think about when you're looking at a set of females. Uh, we want to make big, broody functionally sound females and when I say big and broody I mean wide deep bodied with lots of spring of rib uh, you want the chest cavity to be nice and wide so you want to see some good base width between those front feet and you also want a good wide pin set you know for cavities um, they don't necessarily need to be very tall uh, you don't want to make giant tall cattle because they eat too much, but we definitely want to keep them wide and keep them functional. A wider chested, uh, wider ribbed, deeper gutted females will eat more and convert more forage into protein or healthy calf than your narrower made taller females. So that's one thing we definitely want to kind of keep in mind. You can have big cattle, you just don't want them too big. Um, so this class we've kind of got in front of us, um, if we were just to look at these three heifers, you need to find very, very quickly that number four is dead last. Um, and really it all just goes back to she's feminine enough, um, I wouldn't call her unfeminine by any means, but if you look at her front feet in this picture and on these classes we don't have any opposite views so sorry about that but you know you want to look at them from the front uh her front feet are almost on top of each other and so that right there kind of tells you that she is very narrow through her chest cavity and chest floor um she's not a bad front end you would like to see it a little tighter coming out of her neck um but that narrowness is really what kind of hurts her. She's got a nice top. Her neck ties in very well with her top. Um, and you come back to, as you go down the top line, you want to you want a long-hipped female. I mean, from hooks to pins, look at them from their profile. You The longer the hip, the better. That gives you just more space for Kevin. If you look at her, her, hip, her, her hooks are really kind of mid-udder on her, uh, about right here. And then her pin sets right here. So she's a very short-hipped female, and so that really is going to kind of make her short-strided. So that hurts from a structural correctness standpoint. Um, she's plenty deep-bodied, I'd say, but she I don't think she's got a whole lot of spring of rib uh, just based on the hip, the spread between her legs. Uh, you know, she's just kind of plain made. That's a term they're going to use a lot. She's very just plain Nothing really exciting about her. Um, she's just kind of a cow. Okay. Now, you know, we've got two and three left. Um, really, three's got a little more length of spine. So when they say length of spine, they're talking about from the tail head to the, to the withers as a kind of horse, the top of the shoulder blades. She's got a little more length, um, but... You know, she's got a little more open openness to her shoulder. She's nice and deep. Uh, she's got a lot of power. But then when you go to heifer number two right here, I would say she's a little shorter bodied. She's better uttered. Um, and she is a big, broody cow. Uh, that's kind of what your goal is. You want to find the big, wide set, broody cow. When we say broody, we mean lots of depth of side. Lots of spring of rib, uh, good muscle, good pin set, 
good hips. She's just a really powerful cow. Ties in very nice between her shoulders and uh, into her neck. Uh, very feminine looking head. She's just a big, powerful cow overall. Uh, three's got a little more of a bullish style of head. If you go look at a bunch of Angus bull pictures, you'll kind of see she's not as feminine. And that's going to be the big hurt for her. She definitely out muscles uh, number two. But like I said earlier, muscles not everything in heifers. And especially if, they, if they're if they muscular but still very feminine, uh, that's a positive. But she's much more uh, clubby looking. So like, like she's crossed with a mane, simmental, or key. Um, not necessarily very Angus-y looking. And uh, that's really going to hurt her femininity. Uh, because Angus females are characteristically have very feminine heads, very feminine overall body shape. Um, this one's just a little too powerful, a little too muscular, and they're putting her a close second. Uh, the cut's not very big, but if you had to talk it, uh, and if you just went in and called her like the outright winner, it'd really hurt you just because from a femininity standpoint, she's the one that kind of is the lacking of the class. Um, plenty of bone on these two, uh, lots of depth. But again, it's it's female, so you got to think about the mothering ability of them. And you know, this one's just a lot more feminine. Femininity equals fertility. Better uttered. This one's kind of just built like a big steer, and uh, that gets her second because she's just a big, powerful female versus this very plain, kind of narrow made one we have over here. But it's not enough to get her over the very Angus indicative and uh, broody female. So here we have a class of Simmental heifers. Uh, the reasons on this were done by Blake Bloomberg at Oklahoma State. And he went to A&M and he's a really good coach. So if you're interested, uh, I would read his because he always does a really good job. Uh, so Simmentals. Simmentals are gonna be longer body, bigger bone than Angus heifers, and they're always gonna be a little more trashy fronted. So it's, you can't, can't really hurt a Simmental from a femininity standpoint. Uh, by saying she's got a little too much leather. I mean, if she's very trashy, then that would hurt. But all these are going to have a little bit, and that's pretty indicative of Simmental, so that's not really an issue. Um, this one works out pretty easy. One, two, four, three. Uh, it's pretty solid all the way around. Um, these are younger heifers, you know, fresh wean, kind of been on feed a little bit. But uh, as we go through these, you should easily find a winner and a loser. Uh, your winner here is going to be one. I mean, just a really nice heifer. Structurally, she's got a good hip in her, good set to her tail head, nice level top, a lot of extension to her front end, a little bit of extra skin, not much. Very deep, very deep-sided, uh, lots of spring of rib to her, just really well-made heifer overall. She, The reason she's number one is she kind of outpowers and out muscles heifer number two heifer number two is a little shorter bodied got some nice muscle shape but that length of spine is the main thing that hurts her and so that's just going to hurt her overall capacity and uh you know it's in today's beef cattle industry the longer you can make them the more meat you can put on them and so a lot of times those short bodied females look nice but you're just you're you're giving up a lot of extra red meat in those future calves when uh, when you can have a longer spine female. Uh, from two to four, you know, two's just a better looking heifer overall than four. She's got a nicer profile. Uh, four's got a little more trash to her front. She's not she's not nearly as powerful. Uh, she's longer bodied, yes, but she seems to be a little tighter ribbed. Uh, you know, for that kind of length, we'd like to see her a little deeper. Um, so, and I believe if, and, you know, we've only got this one picture to go on, she's going to be a little shorter hip. Okay. And then you should easily find your last place heifer, number three. Number three has got a nice front end to her, very clean, very tight, very feminine. Um, but she just kind of overpowered and outmuscled in the whole thing. She's very tubular, not a whole lot of guts. She's really tight in her forerib. 
she's probably not very wide based on her feet placement. So she's just kind of plain. Like we talked about that cow in that last class. She's just plain. She's not got a whole lot of uh, boldness of rib, not a whole lot of muscle expression. You know, it kind of comes straight down, not as rounded as some of these other ones. So she's just kind of a nice third, or nice fourth, excuse me. She looks fine from the profile, but she definitely uh, is out-muscled. You get behind her, she's going to have a narrower pin set and a lot less muscle to her rear legs. Uh, just overall, you know, she's kind of... She's kind of just made to be at the bottom of the pack. Uh, back to the middle pair, which is what I would say is probably the toughest of the class. This is a very feminine heifer. Uh, if you look at her head, she's got a nice short face, uh, up ears, got a real pretty neck. This one's kind of got a longer, more cowy face. And our heifers, we want them to you know, have a nice small head and look very, very feminine and uh, kind of alert. The longer their face gets, especially on these Simmentals, they'll get to looking kind of dopey. And from a judging standpoint, it kind of hurts their overall femininity. Uh, if you see this one on heifers, you don't want a whole lot of chest. Uh, this one's got a little bit, four has a little bit more than number two. Uh, you want to keep that tight. You want to keep that clean. And uh, I would say she's just kind of out muscled uh, by number two. But the main takeaway from this class, you need to go in, when you see a set like this, and you need to find your obvious loser. Obvious loser right here in heifer number three. And then from then, you've got two kind of long-bodied ones, one short-bodied but very feminine one. So the very feminine one, she's not just, she's not really lacking in any area besides the length of spine. So, you know, you, she's probably not going to go third, okay? Because there's a big difference between number one and number four. Number one is just a really nice heifer. Got a lot of extension front end, nice clean shoulder, good rear end, good depth of body. You know, she's just kind of, she's kind of overpowers and just has a lot better look than number four. So, kind of going to put one as first and then it's stuck between two and four. And from then, you've got kind of different types, body types, you know, but you just got to go with the overall femininity, and she's just like a little meat wagon, and you're just going to have to put her number two over number four for that middle pair. The cuts are kind of high. I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut it that much. Uh, I'd probably cut the top pair four. I'd probably cut the middle pair two, maybe three. Uh, but I would definitely cut the bottom pair seven to eight. It's uh, If you get that number three heifer off the bottom, uh, you need to find something else to do with your spare time.